We have learned so far that we have complete control over the rows in which the pivots appear. In fact, we can always make it so that the pivots appear in rows 1, 2, 3, and so forth. That's because we have row switching at our disposal. But this is not so with columns. In fact, this example will show you that we have no control over the columns in which the pivots appear. In fact, it's predetermined by the matrix itself. That's partly because we don't have column switching at our disposal. In fact, we don't have any column operations at our disposal because any of the column operations will change the relationships among the columns and the relationship to the right-hand side. You should think about it and make sure that that's indeed the case. So we can't switch columns, so the pivots will fall where they may. So let's discover which columns the pivots appear in. So here's an interesting example of a linear system. I'm not sure if we'll proceed all the way through to finding the general solution, but we'll just take this far enough to see what's going on. And you will notice that the second column is three times the first column. So the second column is already a linear combination of the columns that came before it by virtue of being a multiple of the first column. It is three times the first column. So let's see what implication that will have on the uh, Gauss elimination of this linear system. All right, so the first operation, one being our pivot, would be of course to subtract two of the first row from the second, and the result is zero here and zero here. So if this is any like our previous example, we would have to do some row switching in order to end up with a pivot in this spot. Let's see if we'll be able to do that. So preceding three minus two is one, and four minus two is two. And doing the same thing on the right-hand side gives us a one. Okay, so we're done with the first step of Gaussian elimination and anticipate that we'll have to switch rows if we're going to have a non-zero pivot here. But let's see what happens. Now, proceeding with Gaussian elimination, we would have to subtract seven of the first row from the third row because seven is our target now. And of course, that would produce zero here by design, but also zero here. Uh, so that's not at all surprising because remember the Gaussian elimination preserves the relationships among the columns. And if, the, and if column two was three times column one before, then it will have to be three times column one after Gaussian elimination. And if after Gaussian elimination, the first column has the form one, zero, zero, then the second column has no choice but to have the form three, zero, zero. So this is not at all surprising. So let's continue. So a one here, and nine minus seven, a two here, and 15 minus 14, a one here. So we're done with two steps of Gaussian elimination, and we now realize that it is not possible to find a pivot in the second column. The three cannot be a pivot, as we discussed several times before, and there are no other non-zero entries in that column. So there cannot be a pivot in the second column, no matter what we try to do, okay? So here's an example of us having no control over the columns in which pivots appear. In fact, well, let's take this one step further and we'll draw a little bit of a more general rule on what's going on. So then this one would have to be our next pivot and subtracting row two from row three, well, actually eliminates a whole lot. The entire row three is eliminated. Okay, let's proceed with Gauss elimination just because there is only one step left and that's to eliminate the one above the pivot and that can be accomplished by subtracting row two from row one and the result is zero by design minus one and one. So let's draw a little bit more of a general conclusion of which columns get the pivots and which columns don't get the pivots. So for example, column one and three were pivot columns, columns that have pivots in them, they're called pivot columns, and columns two and four 
were non-pivot columns. They didn't have pivots in them. And this was preordained by the matrix from the very beginning. So here is the insight as to which columns become pivot columns. It's the columns that are linearly independent from the columns that came before it. They have to be, because if you think about where the pivot appears, it's always the first non-zero entry in its row. Everything, everything else is under some other number and has therefore been eliminated. So once again, a pivot is always the first non-zero entry in its row. And it therefore necessarily makes the column that it's in linearly independent from the columns that came before it. Because if you try to represent it as a linear combination of the columns that came before it, where would the pivot come from? Where would this one come from? It doesn't have anywhere to come from. So the pivot columns are necessarily linearly independent from the columns that came before them. So now let's reverse this argument and state that the columns that are linearly independent from the columns that came before them will end up being pivot columns. And the columns that are linearly dependent on the columns that came before them will be non-pivot columns. So for example, column two was three times column one, and it is therefore linearly dependent on the columns that came before it, and therefore will not get a pivot. Column three was linearly independent, and column four uh, was minus column one plus twice column three. So be careful, minus one column one plus twice column three. Of course, the original matrix has been erased. We don't see it, but you can rewind, check back, and you will see that that relationship will continue to hold or held back then as it continues to do now. All right, so, so column four is a non-pivot column. So just to reiterate, the columns that are linearly independent from the ones that came before them are pivot columns and the other ones aren't. And this should remind you of the discussion, a very good and enjoyable discussion that we had on the relationship between the column space and the null space, where we built a matrix one column at a time, and we realized that every column is either linearly independent from the ones that came before it, in which case it expands the column space, or it's linearly dependent on the columns that came before it, in which case it introduces a new linear rela relationship and a new element into the null space. So now you see that Gaussian elimination and this reduced eliminated form of the matrix. It has a very nice term that we'll introduce soon. It'll be called row reduced echelon form. We now see that Gaussian elimination and this very special form that has these beautiful vectors for decomposition echo the discussion uh, on the relationship between the column space and the null space. And now I'm hoping that you're beginning to see the beauty in Gaussian elimination and its relationship to everything we talked about before and its ability to reveal these very valuable relationships that we're looking for. So just to complete this problem, let's write out its solution. This of course is x, y, z, t, slanted as always. So this will be straighter equals, well, it's one of this column and one of the third column. So be careful where you put your zeros and ones. Right? It is the pivot columns that are our implements of decomposition. Plus alpha, let's see. This first relationship is that the second column is three times the first, three minus one, zero, zero. This is telling us that three of the first column equals the second column. So if we subtract the second column, we'll have the zero column plus beta. Let's see, the last column is minus one, the first column, none of the second, two of the third column, and minus one. So minus one of the first plus twice the second delivers the fourth column. So we have to subtract it to get the zero column. So this 
It's the general solution to this problem, as well as the original linear system that we had on the board. And just another example of how Gaussian elimination reveals the relationships that we're after. And we also demonstrated that the choice of pivot columns is really not up to us, but is predetermined by the existing relationships among the columns in the matrix.